Hello there and welcome back to Janome Stitch Club for October this time and my name is Julia and I'm one of the Janome educators and in Stitch Club every month what we try to do is go through some of the stitches, some of the feet, some of the features on your Janome sewing machines just to help you get the best out of your machines and we try and tie it in with a little project as well and this month I thought you know as we're in autumn and I don't know about you but my uh, bird feeders out in the garden we're getting through about five kilos of bird seed a day um, how they can fly I, don't, I do not know but I thought we would go with a bird theme because this month I want to look at the feather stitches and obviously this seemed like the most appropriate thing to do so the usual thing what I've done is on the Genome UK website and I'll put the link uh, below in the comments I've done a little PDF of three different birds and please do not get your RSPB books out. Um, this is a kind of Robin <laughs> and make of the others what you will. But this is a really good little project to do just out of scraps and you can do it as cards. You can do it as um, I've got a couple of things here I've made. Oops. We've got a little mini quilt here. Um, I've also done the Robin as a, a Christmas placemat here as well and I've also done a couple of them and that's what I'm going to do today. I've done a couple of them on felt because that's quite a fun way of doing, having a play with these stitches, doing it out of scraps and then making it into little um, tree decorations as well. So like I say, lots of different options here for the project but as per usual the project is more about actually just looking at what's on your machines etc so I'm going to turn you around in a minute and have a little look at the stitches but before we do why don't we have a look at the stitches that we're actually looking for today and I'll do it this way around because I think that's probably easier so what we are looking for is I'm going to come in a little bit closer so that I can see because I haven't got my glasses on things like this these are the sort of stitches that you get on lots of machines these are your basic feather stitches and I always say this that you know machine stitches are based on hand done embroidery stitches so we've got these ones here but what you'll also find is that you've got other ones I'm kind of looking for stitches that look and this is going to sound a bit strange to, to say but I'm looking for stitches that are possibly a little bit more um, bird like so today I'm going to work on the QDC the 5270 okay and in the this is mode three so we've got our regular stitches a back a page I think they're in mode two um, but these ones here look at these these are fabulous you've also got this long one here which makes a fantastic um, I have messed around before with these stitches and done a bit of a, a chicken <laughs> as you do and these sorts of stitches anything that looks like wings birds feathers mm, fe bird feet even, those sorts of things. Have a little play and what we're going to do is also have a little play with some of those stitches individually. So rather than doing them as a whole line of stitches, you just do one at a time. Because what that then does is actually turn a very, very ordinary fabric into something just a little bit more special. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn you around and then we'll go to the machine. So here we go. So the first thing we need to look at with these stitches is that you'll find with feather stitches, you get ones that have got a, they're coming from the center. So you've got a line directly through the middle of them like these, and then you'll have other ones which are offset. So it's gonna depend on the job that you use. These ones I quite like to use if I'm doing something like um, improv quilting or crazy quilting, and I want a decorative stitch in the ditch of each time I, I add another piece of fabric, for example, 
I like to use these ones that have the center line because I am going to use my ditch foot and I'm going to show you that in a, in a second to make sure that it's absolutely running through the center. These ones, however, and look, we've got more down here that are going side to side. These are quite good if uh, your seams aren't quite matching, shall we say. So if you want to distract the eye rather than attract the eye, sometimes these are the stitches that are quite good because they then take your eye off the fact that maybe your points when you get to it aren't quite matching. So how you line up your stitches is going to be one thing to think about and also direction. We've talked about this with the leafy stitches as well that you know we've got some that are pointing downwards and some that are pointing upwards and we need to know which direction we're actually stitching in. So what I would tend to do is for example I'm just going to use stitch 28 which is one of the, the offset uh, stitches here so I'm in mode 3 number 28 and I'm just going to stitch it out just to see which direction we're actually in. Okay so that's all I need to, to do and that's the serving suggestion. Sorry I should have taken that thread out but I can see that they're going that way. So if I put my bird in and I started stitching there and stitching down they're facing the wrong direction. So that means I'm going to have to start at the bottom and work my way up here, which is what I've done with this one here. Um, the serving suggestion is only giving me a width of five on here. So do double check that because just because it's telling you that doesn't mean that you can't take it up wider, which is what I'm going to do. So I've now taken it up to seven because it is a decorative stitch and I want it to be seen. So that's better, isn't it? We can actually see what's going on there. So if I now put my bird under, I'm just going to do two lines of stitching along here. And I'm using a dark burgundy because I want it to, to show. And I'm just going to gently kind of follow this curve here so they're not completely straight. And then this one underneath, I'm not going to start right at the very beginning, but again I'm just going to follow this shaping round. Okay, and then if I wanted to I can also fill in here between the two lines. Now I'm just going to follow along with this foot, so I'm doing this by eye, which on a little diddly bit like this isn't too bad. So actually that's quite accurate, but what I was going to say is if you are using this stitch and you're using it in a seam, then the foot I normally use is my ditch foot, which is this one. It comes in the quilting kit. So if you're on a machine like this where you get the quilt, the little box of quilting feet in it, it's the S foot. And what you've got is this lip here, but you've got the full gap here. Okay. All of these feet with lips have got different uses. This one I use an awful lot, especially if I'm doing things like top stitching. Um, I like this one or the blind hem one as long as it's got a little lip because what that's going to do is sit in the ditch. So if I swap that over and just to show you on here then that that is sitting in the ditch here which means that as I stitch along that's the thing I, I don't need to watch what's going on where the needle's positioned I just need to make sure that that 
little black piece there is sitting all the way in the ditch. This is quite a nice way. I use this a lot if I'm quilting um, stars particularly. I always think that stars, uh, especially if you've done a strip piece, um, say a six point or an eight point star, sometimes they're a bit tricky to quilt to know what to do with them. But actually with a variegated thread, this can look really nice on a star. So can you see how accurately it does that? So as I say, if you're using this for, um, you know, uh, crazy quilting, so I could then put another piece on, flip and stitch, this is a really good foot for that. So I just wanted to show you that. So we've done a little bit of decoration on his tummy and across here. And then I've looked at another one of these stitches, this one here, which is this is what I meant when I said bird-like um, because these two here where it's kind of to the side isn't it and then you've got this one this is the one that I'm going to use on here <clears throat> on the head actually but what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to do one of each stitch so again I want to just double check I'm going to take that foot off and put my Where's it gone? It's the clear feet. They're always the ones, aren't they? There we go. So I'm going to put back on the yellow, I think, for this, because I want something a little bit brighter to um, make sure it shows up. Because if you're doing this, then just make sure it's like all these little projects, you know, you do end up chopping and changing a fair bit, actually. Um, just as a point of interest, because I'm on this machine, in closer, I, I had a couple of people recently saying that they, was, they couldn't get the needle threader to work. And I think the problem is you're coming in, some people were coming in front where it says seven. So if I take that back out again. So as I'm going in, I'm going here, number five, and then I'm going just the top of the needle and I'm bringing it right over to the left hand side. Find here, it's this little bit here, and make sure you pull it so it almost clicks into, it's like a little V in there. And then I take it round. So don't bring it across the front here because then it's it's missing and just cut it off okay so you shouldn't see any thread at the front here and then it should all be fine and dandy so like I say I just wanted to point that out as I was on this machine because a couple of people did ask about that at show recently so I'm going to put that stitch in so we're on number 52 and I'm just going to do one so I'm going to press my lock off so it's going to stop after one Okay, so that's the direction that we're going in. So I actually want it that way, so I'm going to put him in this way. And just remember, just going to get that thread out of the way because otherwise it's going to stitch it in. And because I'm doing a few of these, rather than cutting in between, I'm just going to lift my needle up so just do needle up and then start again and then just oh too busy talking to you I didn't I missed that so I'm gonna to have to undo that one there we go step that back but do you see what I mean so you just end up with this little jump between the two so you can just cut those off which means you don't have to do that um, a cut off every single time I'll stop talking for a minute now. Just <laughs> concentrate. <laughs> I always thought I was quite good at multitasking, but obviously not.
particularly on if you've got a nine mil where the, these stitches are even wider I use these this sort of ploy if we can call it a ploy quite a lot for making you know fabric if you've just got plain white cotton you can just do a few of those these sorts of fancy stitches just to make it look a little bit fancier you know you've got those fabrics out there haven't you where they are embroidered and although it takes a bit of time it doesn't have to be on the whole project um, sometimes what I'll do is just do a particular part of the project so maybe just the yoke of a dress or something like that um, as I say it's just a, a really nice detail so on where's he gone birds keep flying off there we go so on this one for example I've used the little heart stitch and I've just done these little individual hearts on the the top of the bird um, on this one again because it's the robin I've sort of blended it a bit more but I've used a variegated thread but I have used that same stitch the side to side um, I don't know what you'd call that really it's almost like little fans isn't it and I've just done the two because one stitch is actually two stitches if that makes sense um, on here but they they work quite well just to give them a little bit of, of interest don't they so I've done a few here and like I say I can then go in and trim all of these little jump threads away in one go and it just makes it a little bit speedier when you're doing lots of these if you have got the option in your memory of my Atelier, for example, and on some of the other machines, you can actually specify that you'll only use your memory button to just put in one stitch and then you can memorise a lock off. So it will just do one stitch and then lock it off, which means you then don't have to kind of think about um, the stopping and starting in quite the same, same way. I'm just going to do a couple on his tail. His tail? Her tail? I don't know. should do do this there we go. I'm gonna do two if you were doing a set of these because I, I hate to say the the bunting word but you know they would make really cute bunting wouldn't they if you've got um, a, a twitcher in the family as they're known then uh, I think that you know you what you could do is just do each section get get your sort of ducks in a row but your birds in a row so that you just do each color at a time rather than having to keep chopping and changing the colors all the time because that can add to the time can't it so sometimes with projects like this I do actually sort of think it through and plan it a little bit more believe it or not I do plan so I'm just doing another row of this little fan stitch and I'm going to take that down here. So I've bond webbed, I should have said this at the beginning but I thought it was probably obvious to you what I've done. I've cut the shapes out on bond web and then ironed them on and I'm only stitching through one layer of felt but what I am going to do is when I go all the way around here with my applique stitch, I am going to then go through the two layers of felt. It just means that you don't have to worry about how neat and tidy the underneath is looking. Um, if I was doing this for a quilt block, which actually it would make a really nice quilt block, for example, what I would be doing is either muslin or I've actually prepped this with a bit of stitch and tear underneath um, because again you need something you need a decent 
weight of fabric to stitch through. All of these applique stitches and decorative stitches prefer to be going through two layers of fabric. So stitching on here would be fine, but when it comes to actually doing the applique, if you find that your applique when you're doing it is kind of rolling or tunneling a little bit or just not looking quite so neat or pulling up, then try putting some form of stabiliser under it. So as I say, this is stitch and tear, which you iron it on and then you can just tear it away afterwards. You can get soluble. Um, or if, if it was a quilt block, you could just put some muslin under it, which you can then leave in at the end. So we've done all of that. We've done a little bit of decorative work. So oh, I've managed to unthread myself again by tiddling around. So what we want to do now is a beak. So while I've got the yellow in, I'm going to put his beak up here. And if you're lucky, on your machine, you should have a beak stitch. So we've got it again is two directions. So we've got one 75 is starting small and going fat and 76 is starting fat and going small. So what we can do I'm just going to double check because I would hate to put the beak on wrong. So it was 75. 76 I think we need. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, because I can see the needles moved over so it's it's on widest. And because this is a satin stitch, if you have got elongation on your machine, you'd be able to make that longer if you wanted. So, you know, you've got a bit more choice in your bird beak scenario. There's no limit really, is there, actually, when you think about it. I mean, we could have just done it in fabric and stitched around it, but it's very twiddly, isn't it? Because it's only small, they only have little tiddly beaks so I've left a bit of a gap there but that's fine because I'm going to be stitching over here anyway with a satin stitch in a minute when I actually do so we've got a beak um, and an eye if I'm doing these I've where is he yeah the, the robin I did a little French knot out of um, embroidery thread um, the other one where is it? Oh yeah, there we go. The other one, I've just done a little black bead because little beady eye always works quite well as well, doesn't it, on these sorts of things. If not, uh, again, go to your satin stitches and you will have just this little circle one, which on that, that sort of project will look fine. Okay, so number 65. So it would just be the, the very first one normally. Um, you've got these. Uh, stitches that we looked at the couching stitches and then you should have a, a little circular one or if not actually what I have used as well is the eyelet stitch here which goes round and then so you could do that in white and then put a little bead in um did I do that here oh yeah I haven't put a bead in because this is I wasn't sure if this was going to be a table mat or not but I've done the eyelet stitch in white and then I've done a little uh, French knot, or like I say, you can put a little bead in the centre there. So the eyelet stitch makes quite a good eye. I mean, the clue's in the name, isn't it? So we have done that, we have done that. So next thing to do really is just to look at the applique around the outside. And one of the stitches that I'm a big fan of and it's it's not actually on this machine it's on my big machine is the variegated hang on I've got it in a book so I can show you so have a look and see if you've got this is the M200 uh, stitch card it's this one here it's on quite a few of the newer machines so it's this variegated one and I've used it on Hopefully you can see it on the robin there. Actually, you'll see it much better on this one. 
look at it. So it changes the uh, height of your satin stitch, which, look, gives us this <laughs> slightly, um, I don't know, electrocuted <laughs> bird look. But it's really cute, isn't it? So if you've got that stitch, I think that's quite a nice one to make your birds look a bit fluffy. If not, then we're back to our usual blanket stitch, which would look quite nice on this because it's quite a folksy look. Um, or a satin stitch, just your regular zigzag stitch. I've been through all of those, so I'm not going to go through those again. Um, when I did the uh, tea cosy, if you want to look at the, uh, the blanket stitch and things like that, maybe go back and have a look at that that one um it's the the tea cozy uh, tea lover tea cozy and i go through all of those stitches there so i can then just go all the way around here and i as i said i will go through two layers of felt and then i can put a little loop or something so that it can it can hang okay so i think we've covered pretty much everything. I've covered the feet, haven't I? I'm going to come back to the front for a second. So I think we've covered, oh my goodness, I've just realised the one thing I didn't cover, sorry, these legs, is the legs. And again, as you're going around with your satin stitch, just continue the satin stitch down and then on these, just do a little V across here and that will give you your bird feet claws etc etc um, so I think that's us more or less done for this month what I did want to say was any I'm, I'm been live in the chat tonight I should have said I will put that in the comments at the beginning because I should have said that at the very top of the video um, but I do always pick up the comments so if you've got any questions about your machine or the stitches or anything like that or the project that we've done then can you please put them in the comments below when you watch the video because I do check on the comments even sort of you know the ones that I've done months ago I, I regularly go back and check just in case it flags it up anyway if there is a comment so we'll definitely try and answer your questions as best I can um, if you are after anything in particular if there's something you'd like me to go through um, as I say, I went through the needle threader this time, so if there's something in particular that you would like me to go through that you don't know about your machine, then also put that in the comments because I'll try and answer it there. Or as I say, I might then be able to put it in a, a future video. And uh, if you could just give me a little thumbs up if you're enjoying the stuff that we're doing um, and pass the word around as well. So if you know anyone else that's got a Janome machine that you think would enjoy this sort of thing, then that would be lovely. And if you do make anything, do please tag us in it on Instagram. It's uh, Janome UK on Instagram, or um, you could. There's a, a website address on the website where you can send it to uh, to us as well, and then we can share it around because it's just so nice to to see what's actually being made. Um, so I think that's probably it for this week, this month. Um, so I'll see you at the end of November and we will definitely be a little bit more Christmassy at the end of November. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.